hot mug, guys. Hey guys, this is my review for Color Out of Space. This is a film based on the H.P. Lovecraft short story. It stars Nicolas Cage, his wacky little family, the dog, and a meteorite, and some really trippy stuff, bro. This film isn't as weird as I expected it to be, but it's just as entertaining weird as I was hoping it would be. The film follows Nicolas Cage and his kind of oddball family. They're living on this sort of farm property. It's like in the boonies. It's about like 20 kilometers away or something from the closest town. They're all kind of mismanaged. The mom is a stock options person who is trying to deal with the terrible cell service. The dad is trying to make a living on the property with alpacas, and he also was trying to cook, but he can't. There's the son who's, honestly, he's the only regular person in this entire movie, I would say. Aside from maybe the little kid, the little kid's just a derpy little kid. And then there's the daughter who is technically, I would say, the main character of this film, and she's irritating. She's really irritating. The film starts off with a bang with a rock falling out of the sky. I will give credit where credit is due. The visuals of this movie, man, are pretty freaking good. They are trippy. Not from an hallucinogenic sort of way, I mean just very visually appealing. The color in this film is something to behold. It's this kind of strange neon purple pink sort of atmosphere, but it grows into other colors, and the title is very literal. It is l sucking the color of everything around it and in expanding it. It's blooming it. It's kind of like the whole morphing with the DNA of the land and the atmosphere, the color and the people, kind of like what happened in Annihilation. That's happening in this film, but it's a bit more B-horror movie sort of related, which is funny because it's not even that much of a B-horror film, except in certain instances. While the family is trying to deal with this weird-ass rock, they are slowly losing their minds, or in Nicolas Cage's case, he's just kind of going with emotions as he usually does, and the family starts to be terrorized by the events that are happening because of this meteorite. Shit is just getting way weird. All the while, there's this geologist kind of guy who's checking out the water, and he says shit's bad, and he's pretty much the only regular person in here, and he's got to watch all this crazy stuff happening. Oh yeah, Tommy Chong's in the shack on their property too, and he's just there. It kind of felt like that's how they pitched it to him. It's like, yeah, you'll be on set. Kind of. Sometimes you'll be there, sometimes you won't need to be. What do I need to do? I don't know, just be you. Be high. That's essentially Chong's performance. And while the film doesn't have as much direction as you would kind of hope, and you can kind of predict what's going to happen within the first about 10-15 minutes of the rock landing, there isn't so much development with these characters, just more so development, I guess you would say, as they devolve into madness. The aesthetics of the film are pleasing to the eyes, every single time, whether it's the unbelievable amount of Atmos that's used to kind of help contrast with the colors, the literal color, both physically done by set deck as well as visual effects. There's a lot of great cinematic shots in this film, both from kind of a peculiar, bizarro ideal to some pretty scary shots. There's two parts in the film in particular mainly in the middle of the film that something happens to the mom and the youngest son and from that point on the movie just grips you and it Oh, it's weird. I know I've already said a few things about him, but you just gotta kind of give it to Cage for just going off the rails, kind of making it feel like he did a a little bit before certain takes. There's a part where he's in the car and he just starts swearing a mile a minute and just smashing the hood and the ceiling and whatnot. And there's a scene earlier where he's in an interview and he's he sounds like a complete drunk hick and it's so funny. He's definitely the part that kind of keeps pulling you back into this. This is really weird. Ha 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 cage. This is really weird. Ha 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 cage. That's essentially the movie. It's a bizarre movie. For those of you who really like B-horror movies, especially if you like B-horror gore or prosthetic effects, you'll definitely get your... Uh, You'll definitely get your plenty full later on in the film. But again, going back to the characters, you don't care for any of them. You're watching the film to see what happens around them rather than what happens to them. For instance, what happens with the oldest son, his storyline just stops. 
it just stops at the dumbest point. It just is so stupid. But otherwise, the film is enjoyable. It's very visually appealing. It has some pretty gnarly horror effects, and it has some pretty cool visual sort of mind-bending effects in the film. While it's definitely not a good film for its story, for how the film was put together aesthetically, I'll definitely give it props for that. So in the end, I'm going to give Color Out of Space a 4 out of 7. I mean, yeah, it's, it's weird, but it's kind of good weird. That's what I could say about that. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, subscribe. Otherwise, see you guys next time. Thanks for watching the video. My name is Nitz, and you might remember me from the animated cult classic TV show, Undergrads. It's been a while, but I'm happy to say the click is finally getting back together in an all new movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign. But we are still asking for your support. To see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.